I think it's good to know that we have such a good ambassador in such an <laughs> important uh, and big a private funding <laughs> institution. So um, we hope you, you won't stay alone in your <laughs> institution, that there others will, will, will join you. And, and so I think it's, it's something very important, so we are, we are grateful. And, and I think you, you uh, remembered some very important things. You spoke about the cultural reasons we have to uh, understand science in a certain way and, and maybe not uh, in, a, in another. And um, also what you said on the university strategies, that you, that you saw very few university strategies uh, coming in with the project. So I think this is also something uh, we, we have to, to, to go on, uh, subscribe the participatory research or action research and so on into the mission of, of university. Um, it was very interesting what you said at the, at the end, that there might be some under, uh, other ministries, health or youth or whatever, who might be more open to these approaches than the Ministry of Research. It's at least something what I can confirm from France. Our first national program on um, participatory research funding uh, was launched by the Ministry of Ecology. And it's, it's of, of course, one can understand it because they work already naturally with NGOs and with civil society organizations, so they are used to work with these actors. And then they said, okay, maybe then we make them come in into research. So for them, it's something much more natural than for researchers to say, okay, let's go and, and work with civil society organizations. What you said, it's also cultural and so on. So, uh, Mrs. Nonai, how far does uh, community-based research matter for the German Ministry of Research? <laughs> <coughs> um, well, first of all, I have to apologize because I have to leave a bit early um, to get a plane, but um, now that I've been identified as the person where the money sits, maybe it's a good idea that I'm leaving early and <laughs> before so, like, everyone starts to try and find out how much money exactly there might be for which project. Um, yeah, I remember before I... Um, um, joined the ministry, I always thought oh, it would be lovely to work for the government because then I would be able to govern and I would be able to make policy and take decisions. And, um, well, since I actually joined, <laughs> I've found out that very often as a government official you find yourself torn a bit uh, between the two extremes that on the one hand people ask you, well, why are you sitting there at all? Because shouldn't research be something that is done by the research institutions, by university, there should be competition, then there's private industry, there are mighty foundations as um, the Stifterverband. Uh, what is government doing in this, actually? And then, on the other hand, you always find people who say, but why are you not doing much more? Because you're not funding this, and you're not funding this, and this is very important, and government's not doing its part in this. Um, and so it's, um, it's very interesting, but it's not very easy <laughs> to work in this... Um, this uh, sort of um, difficult field. Um, I think traditionally the idea about policy making in the area of uh, funding uh, research and innovation um, was quite straightforward. The, the ministry thought, okay, we will set an agenda, we will try and identify the important technologies, uh, we will talk to experts, and then we will have a long-term planning where we allocate the money to the institutions. And I think the idea that one could interact with civil society in this question uh, was quite remote from many people's minds in the um, government institutions maybe up until 20, 30 years ago. Um, so I think since then we've seen quite a, a significant change, um, not focusing so much on the technology push side, but much more looking at the demand pull side and asking not what are the 15 most important technology fields which we want to further in the next 20 years, but asking um, what are the demands actually coming from society um, and what are the goals that we want to achieve. So we don't say we just pay this and this amount of money for information technology, but we ask what is the sort of society that we want to live in and what sort of technologies do we need to further in order to arrive at that uh, goal. Um, and once we, we made that change and looked much more at the demand pull side, then naturally we focus much more on, well, we then actually have to talk to the people <laughs> who, uh, who we are funding this research for. Um, and even though I believe that it is something that should 
be a sort of grassroots movement, uh, as, as many here are doing this in their everyday tasks. Um, I also think that a, a ministry does well in trying to include that in its policy making as well. Um, so we've been initiating a number of um, civil society dialogues, especially in high tech um, areas, where we think there is not only a demand for a lot of information and discussion, but it is also very interesting and important for us to know what people actually envisage for their future and what sort of uh, society and country they want to live in. So we've done um, two quite major civil society dialogues focusing um, on new energy technologies and on uh, high-tech medicine, um, which we did uh, as quite extensive um, uh, sort of uh, real life discussions in a, a large number of cities um, accompanied by an online dialogue and uh, centering in a what we called a citizen conference at the end um, where over a period of maybe like half a year the um, citizens actually worked on a document which in the end then was presented to the Minister for uh, Research um, which had quite a specific agenda points and what sort of um, energy technologies do the citizens think uh, should be invested in further? Where should more research be done? Um, what is the sort of energy that people want actually in their cities, in their homes, and what are their plans for the future? Um, it is, um, it's a very nice idea, but we learned a lot in the process, and we're doing further um, civil society dialogues. Um, and we try to develop the instrument further because, um, well, as it's, it's quite obvious that the, the quality of such a dialogue depends very much on the level of transparency which you can create, the level of information that you can provide for the people taking part in it. Um, the, the accessibility of such a dialogue for a large number of people and not only sort of uh, the few who always take part in, uh, in formats like this. Um, and it also depends uh, to be credible in the end um, on politics to actually take into account the recommendations that come out of such a dialogue because uh, you can very, very quickly um, um, end all confidence in an instrument like this if you then just put it somewhere and say, yeah, okay, well, great, we talked to the citizen and we've done this uh, as well now so we can just go on as we did before. Um, we found that the online dialogue um, is quite a difficult and, and problematic instrument still, because as uh, probably many of you have um, followed as well, the, the online, online dialogue done by the federal chancellor, Angela Merkel, um, showed that it's very difficult how you moderate such an online dialogue properly so that you arrive at conclusions and recommendations in the end that really reflect what a majority um, of people in this country things and that you don't arrive at completely distorted <laughs> pictures which then don't really bring you any further in the in the um, process um, yeah so we've we've already learned a lot we're very interested in a more intensive dialogue we're very interested in to hear ideas uh, where what works um, how we can actually further a closer dialogue between policy making in the area of research, research and innovation um, between actual people who do research and between citizens who are affected by this research and have a strong interest in, um, in how we do it. Um, yeah, I personally think it's, an, it's a, a, an incredible and very, very interesting field and um, we're looking forward to do more in it. Thank you very much, Mrs. Nerney. So it seems uh, we have two ambassadors. <laughs> well, what is also also good news? Um, um, so, and um, I mean, we, we learned quite a lot because uh, when, when you started to say, uh, how far do governors govern? Of course, then we could have a whole discussion about how far our democratic institutions uh, still reply or, or have the possibility uh, um, to to function. But this is another another discussion. Uh, I just wanted to raise one point because I think it's, it's important and interesting uh, because it's always the question, how do we shape a problem? How do we define a problem? And also, so how do we define a debate on a certain problem? 
And so it was very interesting when you said that you have organized two debates on new energy technologies and high-tech medicine. It's something what we um, observe also with the European Commission, that there is, a, let's say, a tendency to define the debate starting with the technology. For instance, the European Commission can now have a technology on synthetic biology with citizens or on nanotechnology and citizens. But one could also imagine to say the question is um, what energy agenda and then see what is or is not the eventual role of a certain technological approach or not in it. Or then the question with the high-tech medicine, it could maybe be what medicine in the future, and then see, okay, we have different approaches. <laughs> Somebody said in, uh, this morning that in engineer, I know in, in our uh, session we had, uh, yeah, before lunch, we had one presentation uh, where it was said, engineers know that there are always many solutions, at least four or five solutions to a problem. There's not only one. And in research, we might have the tendency to always think in terms of one major solution. And in fact, it's not true. So it's the how to organize the debate that everything is open enough, that we are not coming in already in this um, technology fix because we think first of all in technology. But um, anyway, it, it's good to know that there is a work done in the ministry, uh, that the ministry starts to reflect on these uh, questions. So thank you. <laughs>